Hello everyone. In this experiment, I'm going to calculate the average velocity and acceleration from displacement to time graph by using air track. Let us, we start. First, we need to understand the difference between uniform velocity and non-uniform velocity in case of displacement time graph. In uniform velocity, when we plot the points, it will be on the same line. So, we can join that points, we will get a straight line passes through the origin. So, this case, uniform velocity. When the velocity is uniform, when there is no acceleration, or when the resultant force acting on the object is zero. So, uniform velocity, it means the acceleration equals zero. Non-uniform velocity, when there is a net force. So, the acceleration not equal to zero. For this reason, the points not on the same line, it is a curve. So, this case of displacement time graph, when the velocity is non-uniform because there is acceleration so uh, when we join that points we will get a curve this is a smooth curve so this is the difference between uniform velocity and non-uniform velocity to represent the displacement time graph we use air track That is the air track. The air track consists of a bar and the gilder move. The gilder move when we use the compressor. And we have here the timer can calculate the time. We adjust it to zero when we start. And that our sensor it has inside infrared here and this sensor so this sensor for the end of the track and this sensor for the start of the track we have to measure between that sensor now we take the distance this is the first trial we take the distance between the two sensors inside as 10 centimeter we use the ruler to measure this distance. Yeah, so the distance between the two sensors now, it's exactly 10 centimeter. And then we press the compress. So the time of the first trial is, so that is the, time of the first trial. It is 0 0.0066. We repeat that experiment three times and we take the average of the reading. Now we increase the distance to 30 centimeter and we repeat the same process. So this distance is 30 centimeter. We start the timer uh, at zero and then we press the compressor. So when the distance is 30 centimeters, the time is 0.02. We repeat again another time. We repeat three times. Each trial, three times, we take the average. Press on. Increase the distance between the two sensors to be 50 centimeters. It is exactly now 50 centimeters. We start. measure the, the time here. Now we repeat this again one more time and we take the average of three times. We increase the distance to be 70 and then we increase the distance, we find the time and then we increase the distance to be 90 and we find the time. That are the readings. 
the time is very, very small. So when we plot the graph, it's better to multiply this by 100 and then the graph divide by 100. This is the time, okay? We multiply by 100 and finally we divide by 100. Now we, we draw the graph displacement versus time. We draw y-axis to represent the displacement in meter. We divide it into 0 0.01, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and so on. And on x-axis, we represent the time in second, 1, 2, 3, 4. But remember, we multiply by 10 power negative 2. And we plot the points. That are the points. Yeah. Now we draw a smooth graph starting from zero. That is the graph that we draw in between the points. So this is the graph that represents the displacement time graph. It is not a line, it is a curve because we have acceleration. It is not uniform velocity. The velocity increases. Now what we do we take two points on that graph, let it is A and B, and we find the average velocity between that two points. Okay, that are the two points, point A and point B, and we draw a line path through them, and then we draw that triangle. We find the average velocity. To get the average uh, uh, velocity, it is a uh, change in displacement over a change in time. So we find the displacement at B, which is 0 0.7, displacement at A, 0 0.3, over delta T, change in time. It is the time at B, which is here, time at, okay, uh, time at B, which is 4, Point three, but remember it's multiplied by 10 power negative 2. The time at A, which is 2.6 and multiplied by 10 power negative 2, we calculate the average velocity, it will be 23.5 meter per second. Now we can use the same graph to calculate the acceleration. Regarding to the acceleration, the acceleration it is the change in velocity over change in time. So what we do for this graph, it is displacement time graph. We take two points on the graph. We draw the, tan the tangent at A and we find its slope. So the tangent at A give us the velocity at A, which is, okay, just you, we draw this triangle. It's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So this is the velocity at A. It becomes 18.1. And we take the time at the point A. This time is 2.6. And remember, multiply by 10 power, negative 2. And we find the gradient of the tangent at B. So this is the gradient of the tangent at B. So it is y2 minus y1, 0 0.9 minus 0 0.6 over the difference in time, five minus four, remember to multiply by 10 power negative two. So velocity at B is 30. And the time at the point B is 4.3 times 10 to the power negative two. Now we do substitution in that formula to get the acceleration. It is VB 30 minus VA 18.1 over the time at B, 4.3 times 10 power negative two, minus the time at A. Finally, this is the answer. It is 700 meter per second squared. What do you notice? The acceleration is very big. Why? Because actually the errors of this experiment, uh, the curve, this is one of the error. Also, the distance are not accurate. Also, the friction force, it is not the same in all the motion. For that errors, the uh, value of acceleration is very big. I hope you understand this experiment. Thank you.